Gardens has three buildings, uh, about 50,000 square feet, 70 employees. It was started in 1967 by Jim Thiessen, founder. Uh, still works here every day, gets here at 7 o'clock in the morning, cracks the whip. Um, he has his whole family works here, all his kids, uh, his daughter, several sons. One works in assembly, one's the controller. Um, very much a family business. It's all, it's all from foundries here in the States. A lot of the material is actually to Jim's specs. Um, it's not just off the shelf steel, but it's stuff that Jim kind of, you know, maybe we need a little bit more nickel in something or whatever, depending on the part. Come on in. We do two different types of manufacturing here at Jim's. We do basically job shop stuff where each machine will change every couple days and run a different job. And then we also run cell technology where a certain group of machines will be set up for one specific job and they continually run that day in, day out. Obviously that's kind of when we have large volumes or some of our bigger movers. And here is our mill department. We make several hundred different kinds of valve train components. Right now we're machining out the body of a tappet. Um, putting in the axle holes, the wheel pocket, um, the hydraulic insert body. This is quality control, something that's big at Jim's Machining. Basically, almost everything here at Jim's Machining is inspected. Some jobs get inspected all the way through, others get a first article. This is a DCC, Direct Computer Controlled CMM, board and measuring machine. Um, takes kits using these probes. We don't always just do work for Jim's Machining. Um, this right here is a billet clutch cover that we're doing for Barnett. Um, Barnett and Jim's kind of work close, we're friends, so. This is our granddaddy machine. Jim's pride and joy. Basically it's a 24 station pallet changing uh, machining center. It's got three mills. We can load up each of these pallets with raw material, uh, flip a button, and this machine will cycle through all different pallets and machine everything. So with this machine we can run lights out. At the end of the night shift we can load up all the raw material, press go, walk away, and when we come back in the morning everything's machined. So these machines even have the capability to call you at home if something goes wrong. So everybody's in bed asleep, your cell phone rings, number two broke it, uh, a tool or something like that, you got to come in and replace the tool in order to get that thing back up and going. This is the controlling center for obviously the pallet changer. Back to what I was saying about cell technology. Um, Jim's does a lot of engines, strokers, cylinders, that kind of stuff. This right here is just completely devoted to engine cylinders. So it goes in through a rough operation, a finish operation, and then that's our automatic home. Cylinders are machined in torque plates to simulate stress in the engine. Again, back to the cell technology, this is the flywheel cell. Um, we make a ton of flywheels on a monthly basis. So, same kind of principle as a cylinder cell. The flywheels go into this first machine here to the left. Flywheels and rods loaded on a table. They get rough. They go through that machine and then they're finished machined on this Nagata. We can actually hold the tolerances tight enough on the Nagata to where they can go from there straight into assembly and they're pre-balanced. So basically all we do is assemble, make sure they're true and straight, and they can be shipped. This is a good example of what our connecting rods are made out of. Basically, we have a master forging. Um, it's all USA steel. We can go in there and the way this forging works is we can change the rod length to whatever rod length we need. So we can make a um, machine the wrist pin hole anywhere from here up into here, depending on the stroke, bore, and size of the motor. Um, 
This is obviously the female rod, and then with the matching male rod. We started in the milling area, now we're kind of getting into the turning area. Most of all of this is lathe work. Um, for example, this is, I would guess, the main shaft out of like a five speed. Um, basically, we come in, we turn all these dimensions, thread on the machine, etc. And then it'll go for finished grind and everything else to finish off the part. This is our gear hub. And basically, load the part in there. This is a hub, and it cuts all the teeth. We sell thousands of transmissions. Each transmission has 12 gears in it, depending on the transmission. So imagine that, 12,000 gears. Start to divide that over the year. You have to make a lot of gears a day. So you can load this blank, and in 45 seconds, we can cut this gear. All Jim's parts are carried through the shop in these little wood boxes to keep them from damaging each other. I think Jim made these back in 1974 or whatever, but to this day they still work. This is what we're about, product, right? Um, we try to run lean. We try to not to look, put all the money on the shelves, but still fill orders and all that kind of smart manufacturing stuff. Ultimately, all the Jim's parts are stored here and this is also our assembly department. So when parts come here, they're pretty much re ready to ship. You know, they'll be, they'll be through laser. Um, all Jim's parts go through laser in order to, A, be able to tell in the field if it's a Jim's part or if it's somebody else's. B, it also has a heat treat and a lot code on it, so we can track that part all the way back to the foundry. Um, if, for some reason, we have an issue in the field, which every, every manufacturer does, um, we can basically track the part via this code to our distributors, to our dealers, whatever, and get a hold of all those parts and bring them back before issues flare up. one of our newer tools. Um, basically it's a valve spring tester. Test the pound accuracy of a valve spring. Put it in a vise, put your spring on there, clamp it, and it'll read. Basically this is where transmissions are assembled, engines are assembled, and flywheel assemblies are assembled. Uh, engines are assembled back there. This is our flywheel assembly area. Great. Would it be possible for you to assemble it? Greg is one of Jim's sons too. Like I said, they're all over here. We make all our own tooling at all our own assembly stations. Basically, engine case, one half will go in here, comes to this station, another engine case, the other side is sucked up into here, flywheel's put in, you can compress the three together, seal up the engine case here, and then attach it to this, which is basically like an octopus, it'll hold four lower ends, and then the top end can be put on here. It's then hoisted up from this crane, and it goes right over behind Chad right there to a test station. And ultimately, you end up with, voila, right? We do some custom head engraving, which this particular customer decided he wanted some question marks there. I don't know. It's each to his own. You can order your Jim's engine however you want. Black, silver, black covers, chrome covers. Um, you can increase compression. You can ride in the heads. You name it, we'll do it. This is our internal Superflow dyno. So this is our engine cradle um, slash tap a test stand. This actually isn't really attached to the dyno per se. This runs off a 10 horsepower motor. And what we do is we'll spin a cam chest uh, 
at four or 5,000 RPM nonstop for hours on end. So when we do things like tap it validation and stuff like that, we'll put a tap it in here, flip the motor on, and for days and days and days, that thing will run at max RPM all day long. So um, basically it's just destructive testing. We can, you know, when a tappet is supposed to live for 50,000 miles, we can condense that down into three or 400 hours and start doing baselines and start to see if we have improvement in product, you know, and kind of build upon that. So, and then of course this can be separated from the dyno. We can do live work here, engine mapping, whatever. That is Jim's personal little shovel side hack that he just picked up. Hopefully by summer, the boss will be This is basically our prototype department. Um, before things go to production, obviously we have to prove things out, test them, etc. Several manual mills, several CNC mills. Um, any and all of the Jim's products that you see that are off our production are pretty much made in here first.